Hello, hello, and welcome to two new ideas, or two new things that I'm doing. The first, the first new thing is that this is actually a Twitch drawing that I did. It's a Twitch stream that I downloaded as a VOD, which ever so often you might see a Twitch alert or something pop up as a result. Um, so I, I've decided to try to do that as opposed to what I was doing before, which was just recording things manually with Bandicam offline. Uh, that that has its own restrictions, so it's not like I'm dropping one for the other, but there you go. Uh, the other is that this is brand new editing software, so if anything is a little bit unusual, then that's what it is. I dropped PowerDirector, I think it was, 13, which apparently there's a million versions of that now, ever since I bought it. And they had some sort of scheme where they had time-sensitive downloads and you had to jump on it, or else it doesn't work anymore. I I gave up trying to understand it. Uh, I since uh, downloaded uh, Hit Film 3, and that did not work with my audio, and after I tired of reading about that and being told that it was my fault, I downloaded the new version, which is Hit Film Express, and this version actually has correct audio whenever I import it, so apparently it wasn't my problem. It wasn't something I didn't know. All right, so uh, I split this one up a little bit. The initial version took six and a half hours to complete. This one, I split into a, a, a primary stage and then the rest of the drawing. The rest of the drawing is a bit faster. It's like 1,200% <laughs> speed, uh, whereas this one is only a mere 800% speed. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the drafting. Uh, I was tr trying to do um, some more perspective work. I'm always attempting to make uh, my scenes a little bit more dramatic as far as the model structure goes. And in this one, you can probably tell what I'm attempting to do. I'm trying to draw... This is <laughs> this is a Coco Bandicoot from the Crush Bandicoot series, by the way. Um, I'll talk more about that in a bit, I guess. But uh, for the time being, I'm, I'm trying to draw in such a way that it sort of furrows upward towards the perspective of the viewer. Uh, so as a result, the goal is to try to get her legs... The goal is to try to get her torso almost like an inverted pyramid. In the sense that your view is going downward, like... Sh going straight down from both corners of the screen right towards the middle of the uh, lower one-third of the screen. That's sort of deal. But I also wanted her legs to sort of be splayed a little bit. So it was a bit of a, a struggle trying to just do that on the fly. Usually if you're going to do something like that, as I mentioned before, it would be better if you resourced it, found some sort of photos that were very similar, or just set up a photo of your own, and then warp it in such a way that you get the desired result, and then after that you take that as a uh, sort of a placeholder for your general idea for how you're going to make the model structure. But I didn't do that. <laughs> it was just a... Uh, a Twitch drawing that I was doing on the fly. I was actually decided to do it because I had not done a Twitch drawing yet with my new uh, computer, new setup. So as a result, I needed something to test it out with. So a drawing seemed like a good idea. As far as Coco herself, the reason why I was drawing her is because a new game is called out called It's About Time, I believe that the name of it is. People have been lamenting its designs, and some people have been praising them. My actual opinion on the matter is that I think the newer designs are much better than their, their previous incarnations, uh, in so much as they are more solid in terms of the general art direction that they're going for. The prior game, I can't remember what the prior... I guess it was the remake, the trilogy remake. Uh... Those games looked a little bit better, but they also had a little bit more... They had too much realism in the, their design, so they're a little bit unusual looking. Um, I guess they were still made during that era, especially in the 2000s to 2010s, uh, not so much these days. Everyone was still getting used to the idea that you can make things photorealistic or attempt to. So as a result, a lot of uh, art styles were veering way too heavily into trying to make things look realistic with realistic fur and things like that. And um, the uh, the prior installment did have a little bit of that going on, where the 
art direction itself was not consistent and it was a bit it was not solid it wasn't solid i'll just describe it in a vague way like that uh it had a little bit too much of that realism going for it uh so a little bit unusual uh the new one uh, looks much better in that regard the character designs i could see why people might be complaining about them I have de developed the opinion as a result, though, that a lot of crash players, whatever, the, if there's a term for the fan base, I have no idea what it is, but a lot of them probably got a little bit too attached to the original incredibly ugly designs, which they most certainly were not attractive, and are probably projecting a little bit too much. If you know what the term comfort branding is that I came up with, that there's a bit of that going on. Uh... As far as perspective here goes, I decided to abandon the idea of trying to put both hands to either side. I thought that having something going towards the screen would help sort of conceal some of my errors in addition to sort of tugging the, the viewer forward a little bit that would pull out the lens, I guess, to describe it. Is one of those things that I don't really think about too much until and whenever I have to describe it, it's a little bit weird. Um, I, I was basically hoping to try to lens the image in such a way that the perspective was not as harsh, if that makes any sense to you, which it may not. Um, so I was trying to think, what could she be doing? It's like, well, if she waves her hand, then it's going to be directly in the face of everything. If I have her just holding her hand out, that's a little bit strange. I thought about the idea of her, like, signaling, like, sort of a come-this-way sort of deal. It's like, well, that makes it too suspicious-looking. <laughs> so I decided to just, the, the hand-holding thing, because I have the uh, reoccurring joke of, uh, uh, you know, uh, hand-holding being lewd, uh, the whole petters thing that I did for a while, where uh, the characters are being, like, pet like animals and somehow that's supposed to be really lewd despite the fact that it's really not just uh that that joke always uh holds true with me and here i am doing corrections on this uh anytime that you do something like this i find that it's good to go over it with sort of a wireframe like this just to try to remind yourself on what you're drawing i feel like the primary stage of any drawing is the most important especially if you're doing it freeform like this like, I'm not using any reference material. I'm not looking off any photographs. This is 100% just me guessing as far as... Especially with something like a perspective shot where you're warping something or it's being lensed in some way. Uh, Fisheye, etc. Uh, that can prove to be extremely problematic for your drafting because of the fact that you're operating on pure guesswork. It's not something that you would view in real life because we don't walk around with fisheye lenses. But at the same time, it's something dramatic and interesting to look at that does make sense visually because we've seen it with uh, technology. And uh, being able to lens it that way does lend itself to some interesting uh, <laughs> legwork for the eyes. So whenever you're doing your construction, you have to be very, very careful. And that means usually doing two, three, four, five different drafts. Although, um, even then, if you do that too much, you will eventually get to the point where it stops being coherent to your eyes, and it just does not make any sense anymore. This may not make sense if you don't draw, but you can draw something enough and go over it enough times that you stop seeing any errors in it, because you get you start concentrating on fixing small minutia problems in the overall draft so as a result as a result you don't see the whole thing anymore which can that can be a huge problem so typically you need to step away for a while uh, here i was considering the idea of drawing a window over the structure of that bed and by the way bed the bed is there primarily just as another one of the, my little jokes i uh, just wanted it to be slightly suspicious <laughs> something to imply something more is going on when it actually isn't one of those things oh i know uh, i actually uh was considering this at the time uh i looked up to see what exactly her age was not because i was worried about the fbi showing up or anything 
Uh, but just because I was curious. Because so many people obviously draw her. Um, the developers describe her, they don't stipulate what her age is, but she does say that she's a girl next door and that's all they were really going for. Just the idea that she is uh, sort of the, the the every person as far as uh, that uh, type of uh, person goes. So as a result, they didn't want to specify anything directly, but she's probably, in their words, I think a teenage girl, I think is how they, they described it. But anyways, uh, not something I really care too much about. It's one of those artist things. I thought about this some recently, and it's something I really don't go into too much. Original primary, next primary. Um, the idea of, for artists especially, differentiating between reality and drawings, which if you're an artist, you probably don't have this problem. Uh, for people that don't have any artistic leanings and all at all and don't have any experience with it, I find that they are much less comfortable with it. Um, but with an artist, like think of it this way. You grew up drawing, like say if you drew a stick figure and then you like wrote Hitler above it or something like that. Uh, if you were doing that yourself, then you might laugh and go, ha ha ha. Hitler stick figure or whatever, like you're some idiot drawing a uh, a little thing, a doodle in the middle of class whenever you're a kid or something, something like that. Um, here I was being greatly dissatisfied with the uh, my brush work, so I decided to uh, change some of its settings. So that's me practicing with it. So if you do that back in uh, your school days, obviously it doesn't mean anything. Like you're just being stupid. Um, if you're the one in control of that sort of thing, then it means way less to someone than uh, than if they were not the one doing it. I think that I can remember at least one memory of, of being in uh, high school and drawing stupid pictures in my uh, uh, notebook and like going over um, going over existing illustrations in some sort of guidebook that we had. I can't remember what it was. But I do remember drawing different things and uh, getting laughs. And then I drew one thing, in I can't remember what it was, in particular that offended one of my uh, uh, classmates really, really greatly for whatever reason it was. And uh, I don't really remember too much about it other than the fact that I uh, immediately realized, you know what, this thing that I don't take seriously is probably something that they take seriously. Because they're the ones that are really impressed with the idea of drawing. Whereas with me, it's just something I do and something that I don't think about. And I find that artists are a lot like this, because whenever you have the ability to do, to just make something out of nothing, and it can be whatever you want it to be, and here I was trying to figure out how to get this new version of Psy to actually move the canvas all the way to one side instead of stopping at the edge of the screen. Turned out, yes, that was a setting, unusually. Um... But if you have the ability to just construct something out of nothing, then you tend to take it way less seriously. Um, this is one of those things where if someone has a talent for something, then of course it's not a big deal to them. But to someone on the outside, it seems to be way more of a big deal. So maybe that requires more explanation, but I'm pretty satisfied with that much. Um, if you guys have any weird thoughts about that... <laughs> <laughs> either keep them to yourselves or uh, ask in the comments how to know which one. It really depends on what exactly the comment is, isn't it? All right, but anyways, you get the idea. So with the the idea of drawing this completely fictional uh, bandicoot creature, which bandicoots, by the way, are just horrible looking. They have these weird little snouts that sort of, they're not like elephant-like. They, they almost have this sort of a trunk sort of look to them, and they wiggle a lot whenever they sniff it. Ugh. Like, they're, they're really nasty-looking little creatures. They're kind of cute, but they're also kind of nasty. But anyways, you get the idea. <laughs> uh, bandicoot creatures. Um, that, so the idea of drawing this uh, teenage bandicoot creature in such a way that it would might imply something improper, like, to me, who cares? Like, that, that's my actual opinion on it. It's like, it's a fictional thing. Who really gives a crap? Um, but some other people will take it very, very seriously. A lot of that is... Uh, a lot of that is projection, like uh, something may have happened to them whenever they're younger. So as a result, they take things like that much more seriously, especially, again, if they don't have a background in this sort of thing. And they're not used to that sort of uh, 
control over reality, I guess I'll put it, that is incomprehensible to certain people, uh, depending on their background. Uh, so it becomes a problem. You know, you just it, different strokes for different folks, I guess. But for artists like myself and others, we just don't care. Uh, not going to propagate uh, bad attitudes or anything, but you get the idea. Uh, so it kind of just varies from person to person. Just a stray thought that I have from time to time, because it does come up for obvious reasons. Because sometimes I'll make a joke and, let's see, there was a, a picture of, it was a little sketch of a Ransom Graham monster, the thing from uh, Star Butterfly. I drew one of those lately, and I, well, not lately, it was like a couple years ago, or a year and a half. And it was a joke picture of her... And by the way, this is she is an adult character even in the show. I mean, she has a job. Um, it's her, like, slamming her hand drunkenly on a bar and uh, saying she wants... She wants to get dicked or something like that. <laughs> it was something uh, mildly inappropriate. Uh, but just the fact that I guess it was a small design of this fictional green, uh, blue-green haired monster thing that delivers messages in a, in a cartoon. Uh, I got like one or two angry messages about it. One person like unfollowing saying, that's enough out of that. Which is sort of, to me, that's a little bit too puritanical. Uh, but it it does happen from time to time. Um, and I'm not blaming them for anything like that. They go witch hunting or anything of that nature. But again, different strokes for different folks. Uh, with me, it comes up from time to time. Some people get really offended by such things. Other people, like myself, it just rolls right off them. It means absolutely nothing. It just depends. But you get the idea. But anyways... Uh, to that effect, I gave her some big old honkers just to make it clear that she's older. That way, everyone can be satisfied with their many indiscretions. Isn't that right? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's something like that. Uh, actually, the reason why I was drawing her with that is uh, mainly because it helped with uh, uh, narrowing her torso. Uh, I Actually, whenever I was drawing this, I was thinking... I can either draw her on model, or I can draw her, draw her in uh, more of a, a fan way. And I think I've discussed this in a video before. I can't remember. It may have been the last video. I'm having one of those moments where I can't remember if it's something that I discussed online or on a stream. But anyways, I'll, it bears repeating, I guess. Uh, with the actual designs of the characters... And I did a uh, test recording of this before, so I can't remember if I'm repeating myself now. With the general designs of the characters, uh, the Crash characters, the original ones I did not, I did not much care for, like in the original games. The more recent designs have pretty strong art direction, but the character designs are still not quite there. Like, uh, like since we're drawing Coco, uh, Coco in particular. She's still, you can tell the decisions that they were making. Uh, she's, she is modeled in such a way that it resembles the actual animal of the bandicoot. Uh, like her face is a little bit squat. Like it looks like her, she look, it looks like this head, except if it, someone took their hands and compressed it down a little bit. So as a result, she's less cute and pretty to look at in the actual video game model. But she does look more like the animal. So I'm assuming that's the reason why she looks the way that she does. As uh, far as the way that uh, people... This is what I was getting at. The thing that I can't remember if someone said or not. Uh, as far as the, the fans go, fans always draw her more or less like this. Uh, there's many different interpretations of her. But typically she is drawn with this more uh, cutesy, more almost sort of faux anime look to her. Where the head is more traditionally humanoid looking. And her eyes tend to be a little bit more rounded out. And like here, I'm redrawing the eyes myself because I didn't like the way that I was uh, going with them. I, um, what, the other goal of this drawing for me was trying to find a medium between her model and the way that I wanted to draw her. And uh, 
her me adjusting her eyes like this was the very last thing that I did to uh, try to nail this. And I ended up, I, I did like the uh, end result. I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, really, I find that the sketchier that I get, the more successful that I happen to be. Um, so whenever I'm able to adjust the features in such a way so that the, like the motions of our actual on model um, eyelashes are much more, they almost look like vector lines. They're very, very simple. They look okay on the model, of course. Uh, if you're doing something on a model with that art style, and then you don't need it to be uh, overly complex. So it does look good. I'm not criticizing that. Uh, but as far as illustration goes, it can be really unsatisfying to draw that way. And um, those original eyes that I got rid of are indicative of that. But anyways, yeah, a lot of fans draw her in a much cutesier way that has nothing to do with the uh, on-model look of her. Her on-model look does not look particularly amazing, and that sort of goes hand-in-hand hand with the other characters as well. With Crash himself... He comes from the same era of animal video game mascots. I really, to be honest, I'm very surprised that the Crash series managed to survive that era. Because so many like animal characters from that era just died out. Um, like even Spyro. I, w I was playing the Spyro games on stream, and... My perception of those, and I, yeah, I did mention that I was going to play those on one of the videos, didn't I? Um, my perception of those was, I was playing the Spyro 1 remake, and apparently it doesn't actually turn into, like, a coherent game until the second game. But the first one, I realized, wow, the age demographic for this is way, way younger than I thought it was. Because nothing is going on. It's literally, it just spawns you in the world. I wish that phone would shut up. It just spawns you in the world. And you are a dragon. And it doesn't explain who you are or who Spyro is or anything about anything. And it's just bad guy turn people in the state. Go, go, go get statues. Like, go, go unfreeze people. And that's it. Like, that's, that's the only thing that really happens. So there's no world building, there's no story to speak of, there's barely any characterization, it's really just there just as a flimsy pretext for what is a very, very bare-bones video game, where there are almost no mechanics and you're sort of just picking up stuff, and that's it, that's all it was, but somehow that game series persists to this day. And same thing with the uh, Crash series. I haven't played those, but I've seen them. And anytime I see them, it's like... Is re really the only thing you're doing just running forward and jumping? Is this all the games are? And yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all they are. But somehow they have survived. Um, but yeah, as far as the, the designs go, um, I'm surprised at the number of iterations that they have gotten. Especially with how ugly those uh, original games were, and how sort of almost nothing they actually were. Um, but the original Crash design was very much heavily polygonal because it, you know, it had to be. Is came from that era. Also, as a um, a '90s game, yes. I'm trying to, pre I'm at the age where I can't remember what decade came from, what came from what decade, which is pretty bad, but. It happens. Um, as one of those characters, he definitely has that sort of almost... It's not as bad as the mid-90s where everything had to be really edgy and screamy and in your face. But he, he definitely sort of has a little, a little bit of that going on where it was sort of residual from the uh, early parts of the decade. So as a result, he's very jagged and triangular all over his body and spiky in a lot of ways and uh which each new modern iteration he's been softened a little bit to make him less of that and more um approachable i guess like whenever you make a softer looking character then it's easier to 
project onto them and easier to see them as being like a pleasant character, I guess. Whereas the older iterations of the character were, eh, it didn't quite have that, I guess. But of course, I'm not an expert on the matter. Not an expert on these uh, characters at all. And here I made the mistake of deciding, you know what, I want to color my lines. Because I do enjoy coloring my lines so that they are just barely, uh, just barely differentiated from one another. I really enjoy doing that, but it's way, way more work than just leaving it as just pure black lines. And after I ended up getting through with this picture, it ended up not really mattering. Because most of the line work ends up looking sort of blackish anyways. Although if... To be fair, to if you were to actually change it to be completely black, you would notice if you looked at them side by side. So it does pay off, but it is a lot of work for really just nothing. It's something more you want to do if you're doing something with way more simple line work than what I'm doing. I tried to, I've been trying to restrict my use of lines and focus a little bit more on paint and lighting, especially, lately. But it's still there. Oh my god, I'm sure that that's... I'm sure that's Paige sending me messages in the middle of... Yeah, it is. Yes, indeed. That was Paige. Interrupting the video, even though she's not in it. Good for her. Uh, of course, may as well. The very second I stopped, lawnmowers started up outside my window, and people started screaming throughout the neighborhood, slamming doors. It's great. I love love recording. I love rec I love being awake during the di daytime. This is really just th that's the absolute best. Whenever other people are around, the thing that I enjoy most in the world, other people. That's sarcasm. I'm being sarcastic. All right, anyways. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, colored lines. I like coloring lines. I like I like a nice, peaceful environment where there's lots of quiet, where I can color my lines in peace. But it doesn't happen very often. No, sir, no, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't happen too often because it's, <laughs> it's uh, hard to color those lines. Um, you have to be very selective about it. Especially whenever you draw lines like I do, and they're kind of just all over the place. And your structure tends to overlap itself. And also, if you can hear right now, there are sheep right outside the window that are screaming as loudly as they can. Have to edit that out later. Maybe it won't work. Who knows? <laughs> Anyways, alright. Uh... My latest batch of experiments with the lighting have been trying to make it more dramatic, which I have found does not work too well if I am also going hard in on my shading. It's one of those times where, and I really wish I had not... Shading those those uh, big old coconuts that I gave Coco did not work out the way that I wanted it to. And that's because I tried to make, I tried to make her figure more cartoonish looking, by giving her simple shapes as opposed to trying to make her look more realistic looking. But they ended up having the unfortunate effect of making her look a little bit stranger whenever I started shading her. Because the shading ended up looking a little bit more realistic, but not too much. One of those things. One of those things where most people wouldn't even notice it. Whenever I was actually doing the construction of the original draft, I took a long time with it. And I remember asking the Twitch chat, like... What about you guys? What do you think? Does this look right to you? Because I was trying to get the perspective right. You know that cone that I was talking about? Um, wide up, uh, slim bottom. And uh, everyone in chat said, we don't know. You're the expert. Uh, thank, thanks, thanks, chat. Thanks, chat. So I'll just assume that it looks okay. Which it probably does. Who knows? Um, but yeah, um... It's one of those things. I, I have sort of learned in trying to make the lighting more dramatic. And I recently... It was supposed to be a draft. I was just going to do a sketch. I was like, it'd be fun if I just did a, a sketch with no color and no shading. And I just threw that up on Twitter just for the, the fun of it. And uh, several hours later, I published a fully colored, fully shaded picture of Poppy. 
Uh, hand-holding, of course, because, you know, th- that would be improper for anything more than uh, hand-holding. Also in a bed, coincidentally. Uh, maybe I'll show that <laughs> somewhere around here. I don't know. Uh, or maybe not. Um, but if it shows up, then, uh, yeah. Yeah, you get the idea. So, yeah, I've been working on uh, some shading. Um, it, it, with that one also, it sort of has this deal of if you make the initial shading of the form overly realistic or you, you exaggerate the form a little bit too much, you highlight it in a way that looks okay for whenever you are shading it. Um, like what I'm doing right here. Uh, even like this little part on her nose right there, I think that's a part that I decided to get rid of uh, because even that that much was actually creating too much of a uh, a problem. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, it just filled it in um, because it's highlighting too much of the geometry of the form in a way that it's making it look more. It's making it look not flat enough, I guess I'll say. And uh, as a result of that. Um, I decided to just, uh, flatten everything out and leave it as it were. Okay, so. Picture complete. I hope. This recording has been a little bit of a mess for me, for obvious interruption reasons, and also because uh, I discovered that whenever you click away from HitFilm Express, it also pauses the playback, which caused other issues, so... Trying new things always results in uh, small errors. Which, given the situation that Coco is, maybe that will prove to be a danger. Who knows? Not that I'm implying anything. Alright, <laughs> you get the idea. Okay, uh, short video this time. I actually have uh, a gray Mind working on a gray Mind working on another uh, normal essay video, which I uh, wrote in the meantime. Uh, it took a while to write all that and do all the research for it. I'll probably go back and uh, do some more work on that as well. Um, fired Toon Boom back up and have tried to get that working again. I couldn't get the audio working at first, but now it's fine. So I'll probably be able to get back in the rhythm of doing that as well. But things are finally sort of normalizing. Even though this is still 2020 and things are still fucked up. Things are still... They're, they're sort of getting back to the, the rhythm where I can actually work again. Even though people keep sending me messages on Patreon demanding to know where their pictures are. Even though I've already spent multiple videos telling people that I'm not doing those right now because I can't work otherwise. Love getting those messages in the morning. Usually from the same people sending me five messages in the span of one week. And then demanding to know what my Discord is so that they can bother me on that one too. Love, love noise in my life if you can't tell. Love constant, unrelenting screaming and door slamming and so on. See you guys next time.